What's up, everybody? Henry Sohudo here, aka Triple C, and you guys welcome to this episode of Fight Feedback Special Edition. Guys, we're starting a new show, which is called tell of the tape guys this fight feedback has been taking off there's so much content that we want to deliver that try to you fans to educate you guys we're going to be dissecting two fighters who are potentially going to fight each other or are going to fight each other we're going to dissect their strength their weaknesses and all of the above so on this episode on the debut of tell of the tape i'm going to be dissecting that's right marab versus Peter young guys these, these guys are my weight classes what do you think I'm doing? I'm gonna be dissecting both of them. Anyhow, enough talk. Let's take it to the big screen. Has anybody tried to rob you? Has anybody tried to get into your damn internet? Guys, I was in Colombia not too long ago getting stem cells at Bio Accelerator. And guess what, guys? Somebody, when I was overseas, was trying to jump in my account. That's right. They were trying to steal my identity. But guess what, guys? I am protected by Atlas VPN. Looking for something on Google? With Atlas VPN, you can search the web with real and organic search and do it without tracking your activity. Unlock your favorite content from all over the world. Can't access friends or other legendary shows on your Netflix while being abroad? That's not a problem anymore. Atlas VPN got you covered. This is the best VPN deal on the market. Enjoy the most affordable online protection for just $1.83 per month. That's right, I said $1.83 per month. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. So less than $2 per month, you're gonna be able to get protective guys in the fight game. They say protect yourself at all times, guys. I have a future, you have a future. You guys make sure to go to Atlas VPN and start now. Tell of the take, guys, I'm excited because this is the, uh, the inauguration of this beautiful show that we're gonna be, you know, detailing these two fighters, looking at the strengths and their weaknesses. The one and only, I would like to start off with the ugly potato, Piotr Jan. Age 30, 67th inch reach, 5'7 height, seven KOs, one submission, and he's 16 and four. But let me tell you something about these four losses. Three of those losses, I don't know, guys. I know he lost to uh, Nurmaga Madoff, who fights in Bellator. I know that was a legit loss. But the one with Al Jermaine, maybe, maybe he's 16 and two in my eyes. I did, I did feel like Al Jermaine did edge it out that second time. But his Academy Award with Al Jermaine, you know, was able to kind of up the numbers. And then him being, you know, getting his fight stolen from the judges with Ronald Meth Donald. And that's why he's got the four. And right here, let's move on to none other than Marab. I don't know. I feel like I need a nickname for him, dude. I don't know. You know, maybe we'll think of a nickname after this show, you know. Marab Dashasvili. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but forgive me. Or better not, I really don't care. Anyways, 32 years old, 68-inch reach, 5'6". And look at this. And look at the difference. This is where it gets scary. Three KOs, one submission. In other words... This man is a decision king. It could be a it could be a plus and it could be a minus. It could be a plus because he's accustomed to going to the distance with all of his opponents. But at the same time, if he doesn't have that knockout power and he's losing the fight, how is it that he's actually gonna win? Record of 15 and 4. And now let's take it to the tape. I would love to start off with none other than Peter Young. I want to start off with some of the things he did right in the Sean O'Malley fight and also some of his deficiencies. Let's hit the play button. Yeah, so here we have it with Young. And notice how when he was covering distance, he was able to capture those right hands. You take away Sean's kicks, you get him going backwards, he fights different. Boom. Double left. And now watch, this is, what, this, is what, this is what's surprising to me in this fight. He was able to get that takedown. So he's, he's starting to understand that it's not just striking, a beautiful sidekick there. 
You know, when you have somebody that has a John Jones sidekicks to eventually him get the takedown off of this stuff, that means he's sequencing things in. He's starting to kind of open his horizon in the sport of mixed martial arts. But again, one of his weaknesses, you know, good shot attempt by, look, and he was way far. That just lets me know that Jan's reaction skills are a little off. If Sean O'Malley is able to literally shoot from afar, cut corner, he did a really good job of cutting corner, and Pewter was able to get taken down, that's the that's the stuff that kind of scares me when he fights a guy like Morab. Go ahead. I'll, I will give I will give Sean the credit. The simple fact that he cut the corner on it, that's how he was able to get it. Pewter's a guy that loves to fight inside the pocket. Loves to fight. This is where he's good. This is where he should keep all of his fights, really. But this is how he fights. Notice how he peppers that first hand, and then boom, comes in with that second. He was able to use cover distance. Like he knows his distance. What is that? Bah! When is it that he's actually gonna take the shot and take the risk? I, I, I will give him this, man. As much as uh, we talk shit to each other, me and uh, Peter the Ugly Potato Jan, his striking is legit. But there's a lot of deficiencies too that he does carry with it. And I'll show you guys in a bit. But notice that he in the grid, look at look, look at how much blood there's that's in there. Yup. Boom. Yup, countered him. Just stayed in the pocket. This is something that you can learn when you fight Sean O'Malley. Just keep it here. Keep your hands up. You know, but you shouldn't be you, you gotta be able to wrestle people, fight everybody accordingly. Keeps his hands up, got angle. Angle with this body, how he was able to curve it. Can we hit it? Can we see it one more time? Watch. Throws the right hand, oh, head offline. Everything is offline, which is beautiful. And be able to catch, he was able to catch Ronald McDonald with that left hand. And then boom, comes back with the right. But there's also takedowns. This is, this is, whoa, he's going for it. I take that back. A little offline. He was a little too, he was a little too offline. I'm not sure if he got the takedown there. But this right here, this right here was just complete robbery. Look at DC. Look at DC over here. How the hell? Look at DC. You see him? You can tell that Daniel was surprised. He was like, they don't jack that dude. Anyhow, complete robbery. I saw the fight. All three rounds for Peter Young. Absolutely makes it sense. And now, guys, I would like to show some of his deficiencies. Again, what he was able to do with O'Malley, the fact that he was, he was able to cover up, you can't do that against a good wrestler. You just can't. Watch. Boom. Yep. He was able to catch the takedowns because defensively, this is something that I would probably take from uh, his style with O'Malley, but watch. Covers up a little too much, leaves his legs behind, and now Aljamain Sterling is on his legs. Yep, and it's chasing him. And right here, this is where Aljamain does a good job, transition. Bah, catches. Every time Aljamain throws something heavy, he's looking for the takedown. He's just looking to get to the legs. And he's really, what I've learned too about Aljamain, he's really right-legged. Everything that he does, he takes people down is off the right leg, the majority of the time. Even if he starts left, he switches. This is where he does a good job, right here. Yep, go to your back, dude. You're better, you're better off being in mount. Yup, and again, he get, Aljamain did a good job to exchange with them. He was on his legs. A couple other, the up, and then again, his transitions are very, very well. This is what makes Aljamain good. Until he fights somebody that could actually wrestle. He'll go for the takedown, mediocre defense. Gets him down, but watch when he gets him down. This, this, this is where he's dangerous. He transitions, he transitions right away. Yup, again, he got him to do this. Let's go back to that real quick. Yup, again, Peter, look, hands up. As soon as he gets his hands up, he kind of leans like this, but this right here, he leaves behind. And Algerman did a good job. Algerman, all right, let's, Algerman play the game. Okay, let's, let's take the distance from him. You wanna play the distance game? Let's do it. But I'm gonna use wrestling. And what Algerman likes to do a lot is when he gets the shot, the way you defend him, he's gonna be popping his head through. Right there. Look, this isn't boxing, man. This isn't all that. Um, Marab, if, he, if he's watching this, which I, I, which I know you groupies are, this right here, you can capitalize on. You're welcome. I got Venmo. 
it was a close fight, but he was able to edge it off. But now I'd like to go over the other than Aljamain's training partner, Marab Dashesville. So here we have it. Now I'd like to go over some of Marab's strength. Again, I was at this fight. This was in Salt Lake City. A boring fight, but guess what, guys? He got the job done against a, against a serious striker who throws elbows, knees, and has, has good hands. A little older, but a legend like Jose Aldo. Marab, he did the right thing. Let's hit the play button. Yeah, he kept he kept this fight. He kept Aldo right here. I don't think Aldo really like this is why it's important for you guys to train inside the cage when you're fighting, breaking distance, throwing the jab. It was all for facade. It was all a fake to be able to get to his position. Again, he wasn't he wasn't doing much here, but he was controlling and he was catching his little strikes. Yeah, on his legs. Yeah, Aldo really uh. But then again, it's it's almost like if Aldo's able to defend him here too, like he, he's overworking this position. Notice, he, he was getting Aldo to think striking. I think the biggest thing that I take from this fight is look at how close he gets into this cage here. Look at how he's using it. Uh, and he fakes like he was gonna throw a jumping knee. Well, this was this was all smoke. There was nothing, there was nothing spectacular, but he was able to get to his legs. And he's just working here. All those just a little mind boggled. Yup. Yup. And again, he's like, I'm going to take you back to where I know. Now they're in the center too, which is impressive. Throws that and make sure he, what he does is he throws that jab, gets his feet underneath him. Then he's able to drive him to, to the cage. Watch. Look at his legs. And then look at the jab. Boom. His legs are a little closer now. Now he's driving. Yup. Gets him to the cage right here and he's just he's controlling the fight unfortunately boring as hell but he's getting the job done same thing i'm surprised all of it didn't catch on to i'm surprised all of it wasn't teep kicking him or throwing uh not bad he actually dodged that right hand pretty good again overstretching he they him and alger they, they shoot exactly alike it's crazy kind of ass out like they literally like and they really reach for it. Yep, again. Again, I mean, this was this was pretty much the whole fight. What he was able to do. Just peppering that jab, gets his feet underneath him, looks for something, pushes him back. Because the more that he can control a dangerous guy like Aldo against the cage, you know, the better the fight is going to be for him. Now, this is third round. He's two rounds to zero. I was a little disappointed with Aldo, him being his last fight. He didn't do, he, all, even Aldo didn't do anything. So, Marab can surprise people with the striking. I mean, it's not, it's not that crisp, but he will hit you with some, he will hit you with something heavy, so don't sleep on him there. Boom. This is, you got to credit him here. I mean, they, these are all points. The more you're able to knee, the more you're able to do certain things, the better. Bah. Yep. And then this is all she wrote, man. This was this was the whole fight, and this he was able to do it. So tactically, he's sound. And again, the marketing, you know. And now, I would like to take over and see some of his weaknesses. So this fight right here with Marlon Marias, I, I am going to say he ends up winning this fight, but there was a time where he just got papped up. This man right here is super, super dangerous. So I, I, so I do want to say that he ended up winning this fight. He ended up coming from behind and actually winning, which is pretty impressive. But the way he was getting done in, I was surprised Keith Peterson didn't stop this fight. Just hit the play button. Yup, left hook. God, Marlon was so technical. Yup, uppercuts. But look, he, he, he's on skates. He's on skates, man. That's a lot of unanswered shots. Bah, caught him with the caught him with the left hook. Mom was able to stay there and be like, you know what? I'm gonna stay disciplined and stay in that pocket and catch you. Yo, catches him again, lays him out again. His defense is a bit suspect too when he's hurt. You know, he wasn't going back to his wrestling or anything like that. You know, this is if I was Marlon, I'd probably because he's got a good guillotine, I would have just switched positions. But at the same time, ever since Marlon Marais did fight me, like a lot of things started changing for him. 
Like he wasn't he wasn't the same fighter after we fought. It's almost like you if you if you take Marlon Mariah to that to those deep waters, it's almost like it's a reminder of that hard fight that we had. Yeah, takes him down. This dude, yo, and now he's just now he's just he's going to town. This is one thing. This is only round one too, which is crazy. I mean, Marab then he started getting his confidence. Obviously, understanding and seeing how tired Marlon has gotten. Now he's like, all right, man, it's my turn. Boom. Right hand catches his takedown. And Marlon, you, you can tell by his guard, he's just not all there. I mean, once, once you see good strikers start going for wrestling moves, it's just not a good thing. Unless you're going to get the damn takedown. Just muscling this dude. Yeah, controlling wrist. Look where he's at. Great position to stop somebody. Look, look at that inside wrist. There. Look where his knee is. If he can catch these positions with Jan and make it more into like a folk style match, like folk style riding, this is where he could be. You know what I'm saying? He's got a different style than Aljo. And I personally think like this style right here is probably a little more effective because you're in a position to really strike again. You know, got that fro. So now the breakdown of the tail of the tape, guys. This is hard, but the only thing that I could say about this fight is this man has fought his training partner a couple of times already. I was just at the PI um, and he had a Dagestani with him. In other words, he's serious about this fight. A really high level wrestler. This guy's just a wrestler, looks to cover distance and do all that. It, yeah, it is completely contrast of, of, uh, of, of fighters and of fights that they've had. But the only thing or the biggest thing that I see is this man hasn't gone five rounds yet. This is his first five rounds, and you cannot, I mean, he has the ability to just wrestle for five, but can you keep that gas again? As you guys saw the fight with him and Aljamain Sterling. Aljamain Sterling has better wrestling than this cat, I think. It might, it might be the same, but they're getting tired. When you over-wrestle too, you can be in trouble. If it was a three-round fight, i give it to Marab. i give it to him and his big-ass fro. But... I just, I can't count this man out because he's been a championship experience and he's a former champ. So for that reason, Marab, you are nothing but a clown. And I might be taking this out on you because you're a boy that doesn't want to sign the damn contract. So for that reason, I'm going with Pewter, the ugly potato yawn. Guys, thank you guys for watching Tell the Tape. I'm your host, Henry Cejudo, AKA Triple C and we will deliver, and we are out. So thank you guys again for watching. It means a lot to me. So you guys remember there's more breakdown, there's more technique, there's more tactics, and there's definitely more cringe. So make sure to subscribe and click on that button. I'm out.